Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Shaheen Gadir with the Fertile Life Podcast. I am beyond excited today to have one of my favorite people as a guest on the podcast. I want to welcome Tom Daly. Um, for many of you who, is it possible that someone does not know Tom Daly? But for those of you who may not know exactly, uh, he is a very, very special human being. I'm excited to have him here. He is a multiple gold medalist um, winner uh, in the recent Olympics and in past Olympics um, for the UK diving team. I'm going to give Tom an opportunity to say hi and introduce himself so everyone knows some of his most recent achievements. Hi, Tom. Hello. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've been diving now for 20 years, so I'm like the granddad of the sport, to be honest. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've done all kinds of different things through national, European, world, Commonwealth, and Olympic titles. So it's been, been a whirlwind for 20 years, but it's, uh, but it's been fun. So, you know what, I just want to start by talking about how many medals have you now won with, there was a, this year was an incredible year for you. Incredible. And I'm beyond proud of you. Um, but I want numbers. I want to know the number of medals. <laughs> uh, well, I've won four Olympic medals. Uh, I want to say six world championship medals, uh, maybe eight to 10 European medals, five Commonwealth medals. Um, and I don't know how many World Series medals, maybe like I think something like maybe 40 World Series medals. So I've won, yeah, lots of different, lots of different just, medals at different I just stages. I lost me. My math isn't that good. I was counting so well, but we hit over 60. <laughs> so I just want to see the wall where these are all hanging. And if, when the wind comes, it becomes like a wind chime. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> but they're uh, actually all in like, my mum got me a little like metal box. So they're actually all behind, like they're all like framed. And then my most important ones are in like a trophy cabinet. So yeah. That is amazing. Um, your mom has been your backbone and she has been there next to you doing everything. And I, I always say that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree and it's with very supportive parents. I feel that people like you shine and I, I know you have a very special relationship with her. Yeah, supportive parents are everything. I mean, especially growing up as an athlete, we, but as athletes, you already put so much and just kids growing up in general, you always put you already put so much pressure on yourself anyway so you don't need any external pressure from anyone else you don't need the external pressure from parents from friends from family from relatives uh, so having someone that's just going to support you and be there for you no matter what really does make a, a massive difference yeah i think it makes a huge huge difference and she's an yeah. unbelievable grandma and we're going to be talking about that so um we're, we're definitely going to get into that whole area because that's such an important part of your life and i know it's oh robbie thank you Robbie's just brought me, Robbie's just brought me a Lego building that he's just made me. So he's just, thank you, Robbie. That's very kind. Is it, oh, he's made the Calgary Tower because we're in Calgary. He's made the Calgary Tower out of Lego for me. Thank That's, you so much. That's very kind. He is. Thank you. Oh, can I have it? Thank you. I'll look after it for you, okay? Thank you so much. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. What? Bless what him. Daddy. <laughs> what a great day. I know, it's, it's funny, like, it's one of those things, you know, when you, whether you're doing a podcast, whether whatever you're doing, sometimes, well, my son just comes and wants to say hello, bless him. So, but here we are. Right, yep. I'm going upstairs to the, the bedroom so that, there we go. Right, here yeah. we are. In our We're house, all set. Time. whatever I'm doing, someone's there. And um, we, we, uh, <laughs> we can't wait to have him back over. The last time he was over, he was in a little tiny stroller and a little bassinet. It's been a while. I know he is literally like a full like human being now it's, it's kind of surreal and crazy uh, how fast it's I know everybody every parent says it always goes so fast treasure every moment but honestly it goes so incredibly fast it's the advice I give everyone you know when I had a, my first and I have four kids and the oldest is now almost 13 years old and it was so hard in the beginning, like the first couple of months are just rough, like just nonstop, no life, just waking up all night and all those things that are not so enjoyable. And everyone's like, enjoy it. It goes by so fast. And you're like right in the middle of it and don't think at it, of it at all. And the next thing you know, you blink and you're doing like seventh grade algebra at 11 o'clock at night. And you're like, what the hell just happened? 
<laughs> yeah, and they start to teach you more things than you teach them. As kind of, it's how it ends up being. Yeah, she, she knows how to like Photoshop things and do things from that she learns in school. I'm like, can you please show me how to do that? Because God, I'm never going to learn how to do that. But it is the advice <laughs> I can give you. Um, we have a long road to grow this family, um, and uh, we again, I'm going to leave the fun part of the family stuff to talk about. But yes, you are enjoying it. Hopefully, every single second it goes by so 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 fast. I, I do want to ask a few questions and some questions that I actually had myself that I don't think I've ever had an opportunity to ask you, you know, yeah. how did you ever get into diving? You know, for me, it was, I, I lived, grew up in Plymouth, which is by the sea. So my parents were very much wanted me to be able to be water aware and be able to survive if ever anything happened. So then what happened was we went to like a fun session at our local pool and I saw people diving and doing somersaults off the pool. And I was like, that looks like the most fun ever. So I wanted to try it because I thought it looked cool. So I tried it, loved it. And then it kind of went from there, really. But essentially, I was just lucky that I had a diving pool near me because most people around the world and around the country, in the UK anyway, there aren't many local just diving boards at your local swimming pool. So uh, I was very lucky that I was able to have that. Wow. And look where you are now. That was, uh, that was quite a diving board. Do you ever go back to that pool? Yeah. Well, actually, the pool that I originally started diving in got knocked down and they built a new one. So the new one, I, I do go back to Plymouth every now and then. And obviously, we'll, uh, they have national championships there and sometimes training camps. Uh, so I haven't been back there for a long time. But yeah, I have been back uh, well, a few times. Well, it was, from my, it was my hometown. I now live in London. Um, but I, I'm actually going down to Plymouth to spend Christmas with my mum and my Plymouth family, actually. So wow. that'll be fun. How nice is that? How nice is that to be back for the holidays in London? Let me ask a question. Exactly. Where are we going now with your career? Because I see that is a very of, good question. Lots of angles coming. Lots of. Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, I've after, like before the Olympics, I always said I was going to take a year out of diving just to be able to be well, in inverted commas, a bit more normal um, and to be able to like live my life, give my mind and my body a bit of a rest. But there's so many things that have come up since the Olympics in terms of in so many different angles. Like I'd love to be a TV host. That's what I'd love. That was what I wanted to do before the Olympics and where I wanted to go. So there are a few opportunities coming up for me in that space, which is super exciting. And then there is, um, funnily enough, before the Olympics, I sat down with my management team and we were like, what is the plan after the Olympics? What are we going to do? Are we going to do a podcast? Are we going to do a YouTube series? Like, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? And we all went through all of these different ideas. And before the Olympics, I said to my team, honestly, all I want to do is be a knitwear designer. And they all laughed. <laughs> and they were all like, okay, what are you talking about being a knitwear designer? That's, you know, ludicrous. And then since the Olympics, and I think the thing that the Olympics was is now that people come up to me, they ask me more about my knitting than diving. And now I'm in the middle of creating my own knitwear range. So it's all been very, um, yeah, I mean, it's all like, there's, like you say, there's lots of avenues and angles to go down. And then I've had the opportunity to go to the Met Gala and do all kinds of stuff in the fashion in, in fashion space as well. So it's been, yeah, it's been a whirlwind of a few months, let's just say that. Well, first of all, the Fertile Life podcast may be looking for a co-host, first of all. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, second of all, I could have bet money that a knit line was coming um, down the line. I, I knew that that was coming. And I'm glad you're doing that because that is such a passion for you. And it take, it's like a meditation for you of some kind. And it does yes. really well with it. And you're very good at it. I literally am obsessed with it. I love it so much. I only started knitting at the beginning of lockdown, like in March 2020 was when I started. And then every project I did, I learned a new technique, a new stitch. And it became my form of mindfulness and my way to kind of find peace and escape everything, have a health distraction. And during the Olympics, in the Olympic Village, it was so, you know, you were very much in isolation the whole time, really. You didn't really get to mix with anyone. You had to wake up, do a COVID test go and eat, go to the pool, come back, and you weren't allowed out of the village whatsoever. So there was a lot of time to overthink and a lot of time to kind of get in your head. So knitting was my way of kind of getting out of my head and being in my own little world um, while actually not being on my feet. So it was a way of recovery, but at the same time being able to focus on something outside of, oh my goodness, I've got the Olympic Games coming up in the next few days. I was able to escape all of that. That's good. Uh, you know, it's, it's so nice that you have that. There's so many people in this world 
that actually don't have that. And, you know, I, I sometimes challenge with what do I have that takes me like to a, a relaxing, like meditative mode that's not necessarily sitting there in a position just doing meditation. And many people don't realize that you don't have to be in that position to be doing meditation. It just, you know, someone explained to me once, um, I was doing like a mental health uh, podcast and just sometimes like washing the dishes where you let your mind just like leave and just do something where you're not really thinking, but just somewhere else can be a meditative state. That's so good for your mind. And I think everyone needs to find that and good for you for finding something that way. And also leading to a new career. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's honest. There's so many things that people can do with that. Like I do, I like knitting and crochet, but some people do like cross stitch or embroidery or even coloring books, going for a walk, listening to an audio book listening to a podcast there's lots of ways that you can just kind of zone out from your life and you know for me aside from knitting I love just going on walks and being outside and just being able to like unplug from everything and just go and enjoy being outside and you know it's not that possible when you are in Calgary and it's like minus you know four degrees outside but it is also it's it's a nice way to be able to like you say be mindful it's, it's something that I think in the last five years in particular, it's been more, there's been more and more importance laid on people's mental health. And I think people underestimate the power of mindfulness and being able to have something to escape and something outside of your work and something outside of your personal life, something for you, being kind to yourself is really important. I think that that is so, so true. Um, in the world of fertility, when people walk in the door, they're so anxious and there's so much that they want to do and they can't do and they've lost control. And I think that mindfulness is absolutely so, so important. And I, I can't stress that enough for everyone. And I think it affects everyone in every part of their life, being mindful and being there and aware of what's going on in their mind emotionally um, affects so much of the physical. And I'm sure for you, when you're doing your diving, it is so much up in your head as well, not just, you know, I know the physical aspect is huge, but I'm sure the two of them go hand in hand with each other. Yeah, the physical aspect is obviously what you, I train those whole four years, or in this case, it's five years for, for the Olympic Games. But at the Olympic Games, it's like the highest stress environment ever, because you have trained for that amount of time and you get one chance. You have to be at your best on that one day. You don't get any second chances. If you met it up on that day, one of those five, you're out. It's over and you have to wait another four years. So like, like I was saying earlier on, like you put so much pressure on yourself as an athlete that the previous Olympic Games, I tortured myself through the whole experience because it was so stressful and it was so like I wanted to do so well. And, you know, you put everything on the line for that one day. And well, this time around, I kind of got to the Olympic Games. I'm a parent and... I have to, I'm not, I, I basically stopped defining myself as about how well I dive. I've just stopped saying like, I'm just a diver. I'm so much more than that. I'm a husband, I'm a father. I enjoy knitting. I enjoy looking after house plants. I enjoy cooking. Like there's more to my life than just what I was doing on that one day. And I think that sense of perspective allowed me to go into those Olympic games and think I'm at my fourth Olympic games. Um, and how bloody cool is that? Like there's, there's not many um times that I could say that I had done something like that so instead of putting all that pressure on myself to execute everything in the best that I could I was just a little bit more kind to myself and I was like you know what you should enjoy this you work hard for it so this is what the moment that you've worked for why would you try and torture yourself through it just enjoy it that is so smart what can I ask you what are you thinking about when you're standing on the platform <laughs> You know, there's lots of things that kind of run through my head and it's really hard to kind of get to a point where you are focused purely on the dive. Um, I try to focus as much as I can on the process of the dive and not think about the outcome of like what I need to do in order to get a certain score, to get a certain place. And with that comes a lot of just breathing techniques. And when during the Olympics and the competition, you want to kind of get to a certain state of flow where you almost go into autopilot. And one of my diving heroes, Greg Leganis, um, he's an American diver. He was one who hit his head on the board in the Seoul Olympic Games. Oh, I remember him very but then well. came back to win. Yeah, and he said to me this year, and one of the piece of advice, pieces of advice that I have really taken on for my, well, this whole year, and he said to me that when you're in a big competition and when you feel like you're afraid or you feel frightened or you feel scared, just remember that fear is excitement without breathing. So if you take the time to step back breathe and just ground yourself that fear that you feel will turn to excitement and 
you can then control that adrenaline that you feel in competition, which was a massive piece of advice that just really simplified everything for me to be able to find that state of flow when I go into competition. That's brilliant. That is brilliant advice. I like that. I'm gonna... It applies to so many different areas as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that can, you can use that in many areas of your life. Um, and you can even use that in being a good dad because there's lots of moments where there's fear and there's many Just moments. Need of like, to breathe. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I forgot yeah, exactly. that I need to breathe right now. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm proud of your career. I think that you're going to make the best TV host. I would love oh, thank to you. do that. Um, you have a, such a talent with people and you have a very special way of communicating and you're a very good friend and a very good human being. And I think that would be an unbelievable thing that I'd like to see you do. You know, we were talking about um, right before we started with my producer of the show, Nick, who's sitting there and he's like, you know, in the U S we have all these Olympic athletes, like one may make a career that people will just see them here and there. But in the UK, there are people that have continued after the Olympics, like careers that have made them in the front line and in the, in, of their country. And I, I'm proud and excited to see where we go with your career. And I know it's going to shine. I know we're going to have like, you're going to push Missoni aside and there's going to be new knitting uh, design. <laughs> <out there. laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll do what I can. <laughs> uh, are you, you know what, when you put your mind to something, I know you do really well with it. And I think the idea of being a TV host is something that's exciting. And to be honest, like, something that I would like to do too. So, you know, it's one of those fun things that I think that just come natural for some people. Um, but next things in family, you've got the most beautiful family. I love your husband. I love your little son. I love seeing him grow and he is growing at the speed of light. Um, we want to grow this family. Yes, we do. I know. And like I, I said to Lance, well, you know, when we first started on our first surrogacy journey, I said to him, like, I grew up in a family of, well, I had, have two younger brothers and Lance had an older brother and he's got one younger brother. And we just always said that, like, we just would love to have our own little family. And we say little, we might like a big family, but, and it's something that Obviously, with the Olympic Games, it was always a little bit complicated to figure out exactly when we were going to go with our second uh, child. Speaking of children, hello, chopstick. Robbie. A chopstick. He apparently, made me a chopstick. It's a, a Lego tower with a somebody driving something on top. Robbie, would you like a little brother or sister? Would you? Would you like a brother or sister? What would you like? Would you like a brother or sister? Or do you just want to be just you? A brother and a sister. And oh my a god, you, you've heard it here. You've heard it here now. That's what Robbie wants. Well, Robbie <laughs> wants. Thank you so is much. Doctor Gadir does. Okay. What Doctor Gadir does. Do you want to? Do you want to take that down to Dad? Show Daddy. Daddy would love that. I think he's in his office. Do you want to go see Daddy? Go and show Daddy. <laughs> You can be both down there, yeah. Good boy. Okay, thank you, Robbie. I love you. Bless him. <laughs> so, so yeah, like I think, I mean, family is that family is everything. He's honestly, Robbie is he's just the best. He is. Um, and what's really funny is that Lance is always like, I can't believe he's got a British accent. Like, he's, like he needs to because obviously we live in the UK and Lance is American. I'm British. He currently has got the British accent, although he does have some random words that he has like an American accent in. But um, but yeah, bless him. He is, he is a sweetheart. Are you trying to say Americans have an accent? Of course, yeah. <laughs> compared to, like, if you think I've got an accent, I think you've got an accent. Yeah, I, I mean, Americans have like a really strong accent to me. I never even realized I had an accent, but okay. I'll, I'll, I'll believe anything Tom yeah. Bailey says. Um, he's, the <laughs> he's the cutest. And guess what? I love his answer a brother and a sister. So um, we are ready to rock and roll, make that family grow whenever you guys are ready. I know that the Olympics took a lot of time and energy, and I know that you're the kind of person that wants to be 100% present. Um, but okay. I've really been honored to be a part of this family growing. Um, I want to ask you a question, like when you met Lance and did you guys immediately talk about growing a family? I mean, is that something that came up? Like, when did that come up? I don't know if I've ever asked that question. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, we broke every single rule of dating. Um, so I met Lance uh, in LA and then I had to go home to the UK for, well, indefinitely because I, I didn't live in America. Um, and then it was about six to eight weeks later, Lance came over for my birthday and we're coming up for nine years ago now, actually. Um, so Lance came over for my birthday. We went on a we went out for my with my friends for my birthday, the first day that he got in. And that night I got really drunk and told everyone that it was my boyfriend, right? And Lance was like, What on earth have I just walked into? This is a lot. <laughs> and then the next day we went on our first date. So at this point we hadn't even been on a date. So we went on a date and You'd already told at the end of that date. Boyfriend. You had already told everyone he yeah. was your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and Lance was like, What on earth is going on? Anyway, we went on our first date had a few lychee martinis and at the end of that date he asked he actually asked me officially to be his boyfriend and I was like okay yes let's let's do this and then the next day we went on another date and at the end of that date he told me he loved me and I was like oh my gosh this is on day two and now I was like I, I love you too what are we doing we're like we're, we're, like, all going 40, so we're at like 42 hours now we're at 42 hours and you yeah probably of course two hours of actually being we'd spoken for a few months but actually being together in like real life, it was about 48 hours, let's say. Um, and then the next day, we, we, I had to go back to Plymouth. So this was maybe a couple of days later, we went on a bike ride and we were going, there's like a coastal path that you can go and ride a bike down. And I said to Lance, I was just right up and I was like, Do you, can you see yourself getting married one day? And Lance was like, yeah, like, of course, like I'm currently trying to fight for marriage equality in the US. And I think one day I'd love to get married. And I was like, okay. And I said, what about kids? Do you, want, do you want to have kids and he was like yeah like I think kids would be I would love to have kids and have a family one day and I said okay cool because ever since I was about 15 or 16 years old I've been buying kids clothes because like of the things that I've seen when I've been traveling because for me being a parent is like my life dream and goal so uh, then we go on this bike ride and at the end of this bike ride we had named our children and Robbie Ray was the name that we came up with for a boy and now Robbie Ray is here and like we have Robbie Ray and we named him in 2013 on our bike ride along the it was called the Camel Trail uh in Cornwall and we yeah we named Robbie then so it's wow I mean it seems very surreal to that that all happened like we say we broke every rule of dating but I don't know when you know you know I think it's so uh, so heard, yeah like I say nearly nine years later I had heard Lance's version of when he first met you in LA, but I had never heard this. And this is a very incredible story. Within three days, you had named your future child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait, let yeah. me ask you a question. Are there more names for more kids? We do have more. We have we have a girl's name. We we're don't have any it. other boys. We're not names. saying it. We're not saying it. No, uh, I don't no 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 no. I haven't told anyone actually. We haven't told anyone since well, we told everyone about Robbie Ray once Robbie Ray was around, but obviously, but uh, but yeah, so we've got a girl's name. We don't necessarily have a, a boy's name, but it's we we'll we'll be able to figure out names as and when we as and when we need names. So, um, many, but many, yeah, it's a many patients have named their sons Shaheen after me. By the way, really? No. I, okay. Well, maybe. <laughs> really, they not. And I was like, okay, not, I mean, one person Shaheen. over the years called me and said, "We adore you and thank you for everything you did." We named our kid Shaheen. Now, it helped that they lived in Bosnia and they had flown into the U.S. and they had a beautiful baby boy. And then they brought him back to meet me. And they, on their announcement, his name was Shaheen, which I, I, I have that announcement in a special drawer. I look at it often. Um, but a couple of people named their kid Shane, it was, which is like my nickname. Okay. Well, well the thing is, it's like you do, you do, you do change people's lives. Like to be able for people that struggle to have kids, obviously Lance and I, we're never going to be able to have kids without any help. But for, you know, for straight couples, uh, for people that are struggling with fertility, you know, you've changed so many people's lives to help their dream of having a family come true. And it makes such a huge difference to their lives. It makes people feel whole. So, you, I mean, you do you do amazing work every day making people making people's dreams come true. So, well, you. as you know, it's very much appreciated from us, but yeah. Well, I gotta say, you know, it's been an unbelievable career um, that I just never knew 
the these emotions and feelings and thoughts that came along with what I do. I knew it's going to be exciting, but I'm very selfish that I get this unbelievable um, satisfaction of in in the field of what I get to do and be a part of some of the biggest parts of life um, and growing families for unbelievable people. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful fortune that I have of getting to know people like you and like Lance and make beautiful families. Um, it, I'm beyond honored, beyond honored to be a part of it. And I'm more than excited to see where this family is going to go. And I'm, I know that you guys are the best dads. You're, you're, well, our WhatsApp group is called Best Dads. So that's what it is on my Yeah, phone. yeah it is. <laughs> It's yeah, called I, it is. It's and the best dads group. I love it. It's called the best dads group, and I love it. Now I'm going to get some hate text messages from other people, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can't wait to see where it goes. I, I'm so excited. I'm so glad we got a chance to speak, and I really wanted to do this with Lance. And I'm sorry that the uh, schedules didn't work, but now I'm actually really excited that we did this ourselves, and I get to talk to Lance um, separately in the future as soon as he's done with his show that he's filming. So um, I am yes. so thankful that you are you guys are a part of our lives and uh, and excited to see what's coming up soon. I'm there's so many things in your life that we're just the world is watching. Uh, everyone is so proud of you. Everyone who knows you, I know, absolutely adores you. And uh, I'm wishing you the absolute best. And I cannot wait to hear in the next few months where Tom Daly is kind of what direction life is taking you. Oh, thank you. I mean, hopefully in a, in a fun one. So we'll see. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun journey. It's been a great journey for you so far. And I can bet money that the future is going to be so exciting and so much more fun. So I want to thank you very much for being here with me today. Uh, it meant the world to me. And uh, I, I always love talking to you and Lance. And today has been very special for me. So thank you so much, Tom. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone else who is listening. And thank you, Tom Daly, for spending your day with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.